kind of keep the suspense up for the audience. Right. And uh, do we have a name for our podcast really at this point? No, I feel like I'm more, I'm more excited about the theme song for the podcast. Like mm. I'm, I've been trying to think a lot about how I want to sort of fade into this and or fa- yeah, yeah, have the song play and then fade into the podcast kind of thing. You thinking more exciting music or? Well, we could go spacey, spacey could, music. It could be spacey. It could be a lot of on bleep, theme. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Could, yeah, definitely some like computer robot noises for sure that's an option Mm. but if we wanted to go like really exciting i feel like there isn't anything more exciting than uh... that hello hello all right, yeah, everything sounds good on this end. Uh, I'm going to have to like mess around with like the volumes and stuff, I think, but I'm not going to learn how to do that right now, so... Okay. We can basically just uh, get started. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess as like an introduction, maybe, this is uh, basically just you and me talking about the book... The Martian, that is soon to be a movie with uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. Our favorite. Man, he's uh, he's really good. I feel like I didn't appreciate how awesome Matt Damon is until uh, like the past like couple of years, and I was just like, you know what? Every movie he's in, he's like really awesome. He's always he's really he's always really actor. cool guy. Yeah, he's just one of those stand-up actors. Yeah. And he's like every movie he's in is gonna make like a several hundred million dollars. Um, so yeah, so I've read the book, and I kind of like gushed to you about it. I really liked it as I was reading it. I ended up going through it in just like a couple days. But and you, like, what's yeah? T- tell me I, like tell me like everything you know about The Martian. I guess at, at this point, up to this point. Yeah. So you gushed about it, and so I went ahead and. Uh didn't read the book good but i did watch the trailer for the movie so that's that's as far as i've gone hey that's gonna help a lot we've got one person that knows everything and and the other guy that knows nothing yeah and i'm gonna completely spoil the entire book for you and any potential listeners who would maybe never listen to this anyway um yeah so you did you watch when did you watch the trailer because we've been we've been kind of like talking about doing this podcast for, for like a month or something or more, mm. and I imagine it's, it might have been like a, back then that you did it. It's been about a month yeah. since I watched the trailer. <laughs> okay, all right, that's good. Um, so here we why don't we uh, why don't we watch the trailer again? Mm. Um, Let's do that. Okay, I meant to do this before too, but. Awesome. Mm, that was pretty dramatic. Yeah. So, uh, having watched the trailer a second time, what's uh, what's what's your kind of uh, your thoughts well, about it? I hope he has a good greenhouse. Uh, I don't know. The impression I got, like, he's got a pretty big base there on Mars, which is like pretty cool, I guess. Right. So that soil, that Martian soil, he got has lots of nutrients in it to grow his uh, Martian plants that he's eating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What did... So I guess I'm I'm trying to figure out like is he there for four years? Is that the story? Yeah. So maybe yeah. Before I kind of say anything about the uh, story, maybe like just based off that trailer, what do you think a synopsis of the story would be in like 20 yeah. seconds or something? So I guess it's like. He goes down to Mars with some friends. Somehow he gets left behind. Um, and I, I guess it takes four years for them to come back and get him. So he has to grow a lot of food. And that's probably one of his main challenges. And then it sounds like NASA doesn't approve the, of the mission to go rescue him. So some group of astronauts kind of 
goes against NASA's will and goes to save him. That's what I think happens. Yeah. Okay, good. So obviously that trailer had uh, I did a good job of explaining kind of what happens because that's mostly it. Um, so yeah, he's he's there. It's like uh, the, Matt Damon is part of a team of like five people or something, and they're the third manned mission to Mars. And it's like 20, 20, or no, it's like 2030 or 35 or something. I forget exactly. So it's a little bit in the future. They've already had a, a couple missions to Mars at this point, and they're planning to do more after this as well. Uh, right. So they're supposed to be there for, I think, like 30 days or something, just a month, the five of them. And, you know, over the course of years, they've been preparing for these missions. And this mission in particular, they like sent out stuff, you know, 10 years before, or maybe maybe not 10 years, like, but like, you know, five years before, something like that. They sent out, you know, supplies and the the lander and then the, the thing that's going to, you know, the jet that's going to jet them back off the planet and stuff like that. It has already been there and then they arrive in their big spaceship that has people on it and then they like use a lander to go down and then they use all that stuff all like they're you know he's got that little that little dome thing that he lives in that's that's already been there for a while kind of thing mm-hmm. and then a few days into the mission they uh a really big like dust storm happens okay and it's only been like five days they were planning to stay like a few more weeks longer and uh, but they had to abort prematurely because of this storm, and so they're all like on the way out to the uh, escape pod spaceship thing, and on their way walking through this like crazy hurricane storm, uh, some like piece of debris debris comes and like knocks uh, Matt Damon and just like flings him. Like I forget if they showed the little. Uh, like two second thing of that in this trailer, but they do in some other trailers where he like actually gets hit by hit by something, and he okay. gets like hit and no one can see anything and like it's it the the piece of debris like mashes his space suit stuff computer so it doesn't like communicate anymore with them, yeah and he's like knocked out and they think he's dead and like this they don't want to leave because they want to like be sure but they like have to because the storm's gonna knock over their their escape pod or something so they have to say like okay he's probably dead and then they just like leave. Right, and then for a long time, uh, well, at first, like like a few hours later, Matt Damon wakes up, and he's like, "What the heck happened?" And there's like a hole in a space chute, and, and he has to like get back to the the uh, hab is what they call it. The, it stands for something, but I forget what. And uh, yeah, he's like, "Oh man, this is bad." And but everyone else thinks he's dead. Back in back on the on Earth and in the spaceship and stuff, and he's like he knows that the next mission is only planned to take place four years from now. Mm. Now that being said, there is uh, a bunch of stuff that's already there for that mission. Not all the stuff, but some of the stuff is still there. But it's like two thousand miles away, so it, it, it's not super useful to him. Okay, but keep that in, in mind, I guess. Um, so yeah, and then it's just all about like him surviving, and he does some really cool stuff. And we'll talk about some of the cooler things I think at some point. But uh, yeah, the rest of it is pretty much how you said. So in this fiction, what is the like transit time from Earth to Mars? It's pretty realistic. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's like it's less than four years, obviously, because mm. otherwise it wouldn't make sense. I think they get like because the the big spaceship. They're on their way back to Earth with all the the people who didn't get stranded, right? Yeah. And they make it all the way back to Earth, and they have to do this crazy like slingshot thing around Earth, and then go back to Mars. So they're able to get all the way there and back in like I don't know two years or something. I forgot exactly what it is, but it's it's like a realistic amount of time. The kind of the, the thing that makes this book really cool is that uh, the author uh, painstakingly made sure that a lot like most of the technical stuff is reasonably accurate yeah i think that would be key yeah if i was writing a book like that i'd want to do my research yeah and this this guy did a really really good job or at least yeah and then the stuff i got really excited about was uh you know he does a lot of like chemical engineering and stuff and there's a lot of like basic physics things that he does but then when in the book it, it's you know explained very eloquently and you're like oh yeah that makes sense and some, yeah. some really cool stuff happens like what? Uh, so, I guess yeah. So 
Yeah, the reason I got super excited about this when I was reading it is about like 50 pages in. Um, he's like stuck there, right? And he doesn't. He only has enough food for five people for like 30 days or something, and he needs to survive for, you know, potentially four years to wait for the the next people to come. So a big priority yeah. is to get food, uh, and then like second to that, or maybe even top priority is also finding a way to communicate with the. Uh, with Earth again, or with any, any, anyone, and all the communication stuff was on that escape pod. Uh, so he has like no way to do that. There's just like there's like a bunch of computers and things, but they don't have a very powerful. He doesn't have anything but to transmit really. Um, but anyway, the the food thing. Uh, he's got some like potatoes, and they will grow. And one of his secondary roles on the mission was to be the mission botanist. And he was going to do some experiments, like growing stuff. So he actually does have some like expertise with, you know, trying to do, trying to grow things on Mars. That he was planning on doing a little bit of that. Although obviously he wasn't planning on like cultivating a crop at this point. Uh, but he doesn't. The problem is he just literally doesn't have enough material. He doesn't have enough water. He doesn't have any fertilizer. Um, so he's got to. I mean, he he's like, you know, the obvious solution to to that is he's going to use his own poop and like use that as fertilizer and uh he he can use the potatoes to like seed more potatoes because that's just how potatoes work um but th he doesn't have enough water to provide enough moisture for them to grow and like for, like make potatoes for him mm -hmm. kind of thing so there's this kind of like closed system aspect of it that's really neat and he like it, it, it kind of solving those challenges and just using what's there is really cool. So what he ends up doing is um, he needs a bunch more water is, mm -hmm. is, the, is the big thing. He's got the seeds, he has the soil, he can use his own poop for fertilizer and that'll get him part of the way. But he can't do anything without the, without a bunch more water. Um, now he, he does have some like really high tech uh, chemical engineering uh, unit operate operation systems though there he's got stuff in the the hab um, like a scrubber that takes the co2 out of the air and then breaks it down into uh, oxygen and then the carbon gets like attached to some filter or something yeah. so he, so he can make oxygen just by uh, just or he, it can convert co2 to oxygen so that's, I guess that's a secondary step the first step is one of the things they sent early in the that was got there way before uh, the the people got there was the the spacecraft escape pod, but they didn't send all the fuel it needed to, to get off because it would just be too heavy if they did that. But they so they sent this little uh, another chemical engineering unit operation um, system that takes the CO2 out of the uh, atmosphere. So the atmosphere in, on Mars is like mostly carbon dioxide, but it's also very um, uh, it's it's the, the pressure is super low. It's like one hundredth the pressure of Earth or something like that. So he can get CO two out of the out of the atmosphere using the like spaceship refuel system, and so he like goes and like takes out the the CO two canisters from there that it like collects CO two from the from the atmosphere, and then he brings it into the hab and he releases all this extra CO two into the uh, into the just air in there, not enough to like poison them but enough so that the you know filter that's going to separate the oxygen from the carbon mm -hmm. does that so now he has like extra um now he has all sorts of uh oxygen that he can work with extra oxygen. and then the last thing he needs obviously is hydrogen so he can combine the oxygen and the hydrogen to um make water yeah and the the fuel i figured it's the yeah, so the fuel for the, or maybe I'm getting the the source of the CO2 or the use of the CO2 in the escape pod mixed up. Maybe the CO2 is is actually to produce oxygen. But anyway, also for the escape pod, they use this nitrazine, which is nitrogen and hydrogen, mm -hmm. a molecule like that, and it just with a catalyst, it will decompose and you know into nitrogen and uh, hydrogen gases and it like is super exothermic and you get lots of you know expansion in volume because you've got tons more molecules going on mm -hmm. um, and the, so it's, so it goes from nitrazine 
to like elemental and gas form hydrogen kind of thing and gas form nitrogen. Yeah. So he has this fuel and he's got the catalyst needed to do it. But it, it's like it ends up being super dangerous to use that because, you know, it, it's meant to blow you up into space kind of thing. It's like a really violent thing. Yeah. So he has to like take those things inside the, the plant and uh, very, very carefully just like burn a little bit of it so he can get the hydrogen. And then he has to collect the hydrogen too, which is kind of challenging, but I forget exactly how he does that. But then he has like, so he has a hydrogen source as well. That's like what that picture was in the trailer where he had this like little tiny thing that he was burning. Yeah, exactly. That was like the platinum catalyst or something. And he had, he was adding nitrazine to it and burning it. And then he, I think he immediately burned the hydrogen that came off of that reaction so that he could, and when you're, when you're burning something, you're just like oxidizing it. Right. So it's, that's all you have to do to make water with hydrogen is just have oxygen present and burn it and they'll combine and make steam. Mm -hmm. So then he has this like steam production process and eventually, uh, it gets like really humid in the, in the, in the hab, but it also has, you know, obviously dehumidifier, th uh, systems. So, yeah. So it goes from, and that's, and then he uses, he just like takes out the water from the dehumidifier and uses that in his farm. And that's like the that's whole thing. Sweet. Yeah. So I just got a huge kick out of that. Cause it's, it's just so many, uh, like processing steps that I'm familiar with. And it's just like, Oh, these, and like, these are like materials that actually would be there. So it's just like, wow, that's really cool how he did that. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I wonder if that would actually work in terms of the proportions of things that he needed. He yeah. obviously would need a lot of water to grow anything. Yeah. And to keep himself alive. Yeah. And that's what keep recycling it again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, like I said, the, the closed system aspect is really neat. Um, and they do, uh, they do talk about the, like the actual proportions and, and the, the chemical reactions are so simple that, you know, you, it, you can kind of tell what proportions you're going to need. Like if you, you know, if the, if the nitrazine breaks down into four hydrogen atoms kind of thing, you can, that means you can make four or two, uh, water molecules mm -hmm. with that. So it's like, you know, mass by mass by mass, you can just go through and it all makes sense kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that was what, that's what was so cool about it. And I, and that's like, like I said, that was like the first like 50 pages. There's some other really neat troubleshooting things that he does that are very, you know, easily understood and explained quite well. And I think that's like the strength of the movie or the, sorry, the book anyway. Yeah. So that was kind of your favorite part of the book. Yeah. And hopefully they like showcase that in the movie. Well, yeah. So let's, yeah. It's, um, have you ever read any sort of books like that or like, seen it, or like well, how does that sound into, or how does that like pique your interest? As... That was, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I read a book. It's kind of related to this called Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. Okay. Um, it's, it's a really cool book. It's, Mary Roach is this like author slash journalist, and she actually like went around and interviewed people at NASA, and uh, and kind of like like specialists and experts and uh, astronauts, and like acknowledge some of the topics of like is going to Mars worth it? Like, right. what do we need to do to get there? How long does it take? Like, um, and then just like some of the training that the astronauts go through and some of the, like the politics involved. It's, it's like a pretty neat book. She touches on a lot of different topics. Right. So this is like a nonfiction sort of interviewing the experts and talking about exploring Mars kind of thing with people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a really good read too. It's like pretty funny and, um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's an interesting book. I read it like two years ago. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So I think, like you, I think you mentioned that. it to me. I'd like to revisit that a little bit and like, uh, think about that perspective. Right. With regards to this movie. Do you remember what some of the like major challenges were that they talked about in that? Um, you know, I, I, I don't remember super specifically, but I do remember them talking about like food and water being a huge issue. Right. Um, and, and, and time, like it's just, it's a big long journey and you're going to like 
and it's not like you're arriving at this like utopia. You're arriving at like a cold rock that yeah. doesn't support life at all. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. an interesting thing to think about when we talk about like uh, terraforming Mars or inhabiting Mars in any way, because it's like it doesn't matter how bad we fuck up Earth's ecosystem; it's still like way better than Mars right. will ever be. Yeah, like there's this underestimate of how challenging it's going to be to actually do that. Like, I feel like we've kind of, as like a society, sort of forgotten how, uh, or maybe not forgotten, we just never knew that, or take for granted that the the Earth is really like set up perfectly for uh, people to be just hanging out and nowhere else really is. Yeah, like it just does so much. Like, it just is perfect for life. Yeah, or at least uh, for life that we are familiar with yeah and, and mars is just like it's a rock it's really not <laughs> yeah. big rock just, has a little bit of carbon dioxide on it but not much yeah and yeah i think one of the things that they kind of glossed over in in the book and he, he kind of admitted that he did because we'd just be there like really isn't a solution for it at this point is that there's not a good uh protection from radiation on mars mm. so you like need to bring your own radiation shields too and like right. And, it, and that's not just like a tarp or something you can throw over yourself. It kind of has to be like this reasonably heavy, like lead shield sort of thing. So, so assuming that that's built into the hab. Yeah, that that was like he kind of waved his hand with that. He was just like, this is some magical plastic that also protects you from radiation, right, from the sun. Um, sounds sounds you, perfect. Yeah, it uh, yeah it was convenient for the story for sure. Do you remember that uh, that video I sent you a while ago of, of the um, how they landed uh, the rover or something like that. I think it was the rover on yeah. Mars. And like talking about that crazy system for yeah, how they figured ridiculous. out how to do it. Yeah, it was like eight steps or something. And it's it's the like... The impression I got is that like any one of those steps could go horribly wrong. Yeah, and they uh, they interfaced really precisely, it seemed like, with, that, with every other step. And it was just like, yeah, like it, it has to be within this fraction, this many fractions of a second or else yeah. it'll just crash into the planet kind of thing. And and it was like, oh, by the way, we won't know that we've actually landed until like, what was it, like seven minutes after because of the right. transit time for communications? Yeah. So it was just like... Yeah, like the whole thing took seven minutes to go from like orbit to the ground and the, and they wouldn't even, they wouldn't get the first message from when it started its descent until after it had already landed or exploded. Yeah. <laughs> So everything so has to no be super control. automatic. Just, like, yeah. Press go, and it automatically lands itself. Hopefully. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah, just the challenge of even landing on Mars. You can tell that NASA's put like tons, just dump tons of money into how do we land on Mars. Yeah. Because it's not easy. And. Uh, yeah, and there's there's what did they say? One thing I remembered from it was uh, there's like there's not much atmosphere on Mars, but it's like it's just enough that it'll kill the spaceship and it's also but it's also like not enough to really help you slow down at all yeah they had like i think they had some big parachute type things but like before that they had to do a bunch of stuff yeah much. yeah like yeah huge parachutes but it's just so diffuse that it didn't it wasn't enough to like really stop them very much and they needed like jets and things and then like in the end they were still gonna have to like bounce it with uh like airbags or something too. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like they had stabilizing rockets and like, yeah, jets to like slow it down at the end, and then it still would impact pretty hard. I think. Yeah. No, that whole thing was just insane. And, and it's, it's not like it's not like Earth where you can just like land in the water too. Like that's that was like the original. Right. And with landing on Earth, it's like you come in and you use a lot of parachutes and you land in the water. Yeah. But. Can't do that on Mars, really. No, not enough air, not enough water. None of that stuff. All that good stuff that humans need. Yeah. Um, so let me see. There's a couple other things that I wanted to maybe talk about here that I wrote down. Uh, oh, yeah, like so, just as far as the movie, like, are you, like, do you think you'll go see this movie? Yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah, I'd like to see Matt Damon do his thing. He looks pretty sassy in it. He's like, take that, Armstrong. <laughs> but I did. Yeah, he's a sassy guy for sure. The, yeah. his, his character, 
was kind of like this smart ass guy who uh you know had like a like gallows humor is kind of how you describe it the, the whole book is kind of written in this journal entry form yeah which is kind of i feel like sometimes it was cool but other times it, like it's hard to do you know life or death scenarios when it's it's like a journal entry kind of thing because obviously he like survived it because he's writing the journal entry and he's just like this is how yeah. bad it, it was like 10 minutes ago but now it's okay <laughs> 10 minutes ago i was in a really sorry situation but i feel pretty good about it now yeah exactly so yeah i guess does that make you like take less stock in the plot and character if, if you know that you know he's writing the journal <laughs> yeah a little bit i mean i think it does hurt at times but other times it's like a really good way to uh to do it because because you really the like i said the, the parts that i enjoyed was kind of the the problem solving and and you really get like a, a stream of consciousness sort of feel because it's all just like him writing down like his plans and things like that that's pretty cool yeah so it works pretty well that way and I guess some of it is he's writing down what he's going to do, and some of it he's writing down what he did do kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. So he'll be like, I'm going to do something really dangerous. Hopefully you hear back from me later. And then you like you turn the page and just like, okay, it works, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that's handy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what, yeah, well, besides Matt Damon, any other sort of cast choices that you're excited about? I guess you don't know what the, who the characters uh, are. but Yeah, I, I did see a few people that I recognized. Um I thought I saw what's his name from Game of Thrones. Oh, who, who's that? Uh, oh, wait, the uh... he was in Lord of the Rings as well. British guy, or Irish, or Scottish, or Northern. Like you're talking about the guy who was talking to the press in the movie in the movie trailer, uh, like the older I guy with blonde hair. For a second, I think I think I know who you're talking about. I actually don't. That's not an actor that I really recognize, but I I think I know. Who you mean? I, like I don't even watch Game of Thrones, so I, I don't really know who that is. But oh, um, one second. Let me get his name. Yeah, surely. Yeah, let's pull up the IMDb for this thing. Why not? I thought I saw. Uh, what's his name? Jeff Daniels. Is that who you're thinking of? I did see Jeff Daniels. I thought I saw Sean Bean. Yeah, yeah. He's in it too. Yeah. Okay, right. yeah, that's that's who you're talking about. I saw yeah. Sean Bean. Yeah. Yeah, I did see Jeff Daniels as well. Uh, Who's Sean Bean in uh, Game of Thrones? He is the... Uh, man, you really don't watch that show, eh? Yeah, I don't watch the show. I read the first and second book, and then I was like, I don't like this. I'm not putting myself through this anymore. So I do actually know who like most of the characters are, but I started watching the show and I got through like three episodes or something in the first season and I was just like, I just read this book. Like <laughs> I already know the story and it's just it seemed like it was you know scene for scene from the book. So I decided I didn't have to do it. Yeah. Okay. So Sean Bean is is Ned Stark. Oh, he is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah. He totally is. And then he's pretty good until he gets his head chopped off. Yeah. And then he's just not. Eh. Did they ever bring him back? Did they like somehow raise him back to life or something? Or he, his twin brother shows up or something? No, not in the not in the show. But I would believe that it happened in the books. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Uh, I thought I thought I saw that like Cat Stark got resurrected in the books, but that's that super weird. Did, did that happen in the books? Uh, not. I only got through the second one, and I don't think she had died at that point. Okay. Yeah. So, man, so you, you didn't even finish reading the books, and now you're not watching the show. No, I like I told you, I didn't like it. Like I, I, I wanted to give it a chance because I was because it's such a huge phenomenon, and everyone seems to not be able to get enough of it. And I think part of it is I just want to feel cool for being the only person who doesn't like it. But I also <laughs> like. I was just like, this book is not very good. Like, I, I didn't find yeah. it very exciting, and it was it was way too long too. It also, like, it's it's a pretty huge commitment to read one of those things. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, I think three and four are the strongest books, and I think the other ones aren't really as. Oh, it sounds like but, I was I was unlucky too then because I only read one and two. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's that's what I've heard is three and four are the strongest, and then it's downhill from there. And, Right. One and two are pretty long and kind of boring. 
All right. Uh, it's a lot of background info, right? Like I've heard he just writes and writes and writes about characters that don't affect the plot. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a lot of that. And then, yeah, like not affecting the plot and writing about stuff. It just, I found there was way too much of that. Like things need to come together at some point, man. Like it, you gotta, you gotta give me something to sort of build on in my mind. Yeah. It's a good drama. Like the show is, I don't know. I, I don't know if I take stock in the characters, uh, so much because there are quite a few characters and you know that they're going to die. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's like just a matter of time. See, like, no, but I also have seen other shows and movies where you know that the main character can't die because it's like, well, if he dies, it's not going to be a good story. So right. you, you just, that's kind of the opposite effect. Yeah. But, they, they made that choice to be like the shock value. Yeah. There. And it is that's good kind of because you, you, you really do start caring about characters, right? Uh, and and, and like, worrying about them. Being, like, oh man, does this person have long to live? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool, I guess. I think you know, I think I would like the show if I started watching it again. I, I just yeah. really the only reason I stopped watching because I was like, I already know what's happening. Yeah, so it's a good show. I should it's, I should uh, just like start on season two or three or something and see what happens. Yeah, do that. I think each each season basically mirrors the books in terms of like the extent of how far the plot goes. Right. Like there's a little bit of overlap for some of it, but uh, I think one and two are basically one and two for the books. So. Right. Uh, That's pretty good. <clears throat> so anyway, Sean Bean, he's in it. What about uh, <laughs> there's Kate Mara's in it as well? Did you watch House of Cards? Yes. Um, so she's the 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 girl reporter in season one. Yeah, the one that gets uh, she takes a ride on the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> this is yeah. We like maybe we should call this podcast like spoiler cast or something. Just spoil everything. Spoil. Like we we already spoiled Game of Thrones, The Martian, and uh, House of Cards season one. So we're doing pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so she's she's in it. She, yeah, she's been in a little. She's been in other stuff since. Uh, House of Cards, I think. You know what I recognized, or I saw her in, and I was just like, oh, that's uh, Kate Mara from House of Cards, was uh, that Broken Bells music video. She, did, oh, really? Did you see that? No, I didn't. It's pretty neat. It's like this like, extended music video thing, uh, and she's like plays a alien visiting from outer space to um, whatever the, the guy from the shins, whatever his name is, I forget right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's pretty cool. That's like that. I know her. I remember her more from like that now than anything else. I think. It's funny. She like I'm looking at her Wikipedia page. She actually has a pretty extensive. Like she was in big movies since like 19. Uh, her since 2005. Anyway, she was in Brokeback Mountain. She was in a few other movies. I recognize and. Um, Apparently she's gonna be the Invisible Woman in Fantastic Four. Oh man, didn't that but maybe that already came out? I don't know. Yeah, is she the Invisible Woman in Fantastic Four, the first one? Mm, no, that was uh... who was that? I don't know. We was... don't know. We don't know enough about these movies to be talking about them. I don't think. No, we really don't. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then Kristen Wiig's in this one as well, The Martian. Going back to that, I pretty much will watch any movie with Kristen Wiig in it, I think. Yeah, she's great. Uh, but this is kind of a drama. Right. Yeah. Well, she does, like, have you seen uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty with yes. ben, ben Stiller? She's yeah. That's, like, kind of a serious, well, yeah, it's a comedy, it's... but it's, like, uh Friendly. I feel like if it wasn't Ben Stiller and Kristen Wiig, it wouldn't be a comedy. Like, right? And Adam Scott, like they're they're all funny people, but it's the content isn't super funny, really. Yeah. Oh man, I love that movie so much. That's one of my yeah, favorite movies. Yeah, I like that movie. It was pretty good, eh? Yeah, so beautiful too. They like whoever the director of photography on that was, a one. Yeah, he went to Iceland, right? Yeah, they did Iceland. He's in Greenland too, and yeah. I wonder if they filmed uh, like that. There's a bunch of scenes in like the Himalayas too. Like, I wonder if that was on location or somewhere cool or something. Probably just in Iceland, yeah, I guess. They did some really cool, uh, 
good shoots. Good, uh... For sure. And like color composition, like the whole movie's like blue and yellow it's like or super something. Super saturated. <laughs> yeah. They put the like iPhone enhance button on. Oh yeah. There yeah. are some filters going on for sure. Yeah. Super super saturated vistas. <laughs> did you uh, see? Uh, or did you have you watched any Community? That TV yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. Do- Donald Glover's in this. Oh, did yeah. you notice him? He was he just had like a two second thing in the trailer. But I think I noticed him the first time I watched the trailer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they had, they had they had two black guys. They managed to get in this movie. Uh, him, Donald Glover as the like um, I guess I don't know if it's astrophysicist. Probably not. Whoever it is that like the guy whoever whoever it is that calculates the. Uh, the uh, trajectories and stuff. That's the that's like what his character is going to be, Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Yeah. And then um, the other guy was uh, Quietel Okrafor, if I'm pronouncing that right, the Oscar-winning guy. I don't even yeah. know. He must be like, oh, he's the uh, he's playing the NASA like department head kind of thing of the like Mars missions. Yeah. That's that's kind of like a secondary plot in the book is. Most of it's like this journal thing, but then they do have, you know, maybe like 10 to 15 percent of the book is, uh, and like prose, back on Earth of the kind of drama of them realizing that he's still alive and then to, trying to figure out what they can do to help him out, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. That's where everyone else kind of comes in. So it seems like I mean to me that seems like a pretty all-star cast as far as, like for a, yeah. a sci-fi movie pretty crazy it's like like i wonder what like looking comparing this cast to interstellar i'm gonna bring that up in a bit yeah i, I still haven't seen interstellar oh know. man yeah you should i think and that's i think like, that's really great so up my alley. I love sci-fi. oh yeah it's great I and Chris, I think... christopher nolan directing it too like you know it's mm. gonna be crazy or Harry like batman I, we're gonna watch it and then i think when we did really want to watch it it wasn't quite out yet for us to get a good download of it. Right, yeah. In that, that awkward between theaters and DVD. I forgot about it, but it, yeah. I love... Yeah, no, you should definitely watch that. Um, oh, Matthew McConaughey, he's just such a great actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's been doing like, pretty well recently. I mean, that like they got him... I was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about, I think, like how to predict when a good movie is, or what, when a movie is going to be good, based on, like... A bunch of different things, but obviously cast was one of them. And yeah. they they talked specifically about Interstellar, and they were like, you know what? Like Christopher Nolan lucked out, and that when Matthew McConaughey was cast for Interstellar, he was like just starting to to kind of ramp up into being like a serious actor. Like he, what you're saying, failure to launch wasn't serious. I I mean, <laughs> they're only that was a that was a good movie. <laughs> I mean, as great as that movie is. I'm not sure how many times they talk about it in like film school or something. I don't know. Like that. I'd give his hair four stars. Yeah. Oh, definitely. At least four stars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they like he signed on like right at the perfect time. Was like committed to it, and it's just like all of a sudden they have a you know a best actor caliber person, um, Oscar winning best actor uh, playing their like lead role when like when they cast him they were like yeah we're getting the, the guy who did failure to launch it's gonna be hilarious it's just like one of those corny chick flick actors yeah like it, it probably interstellar was probably going to be a chick flick and then they're like oh man, we, we gotta step up our game here like do some rewrites something happened to matthew mcconaughey he just like turned into a good actor all yeah. of a sudden he went through a black hole and came out the other side a good good actor I don't know what actually he probably saying. always was a good actor he just like didn't get cast in roles where he could show it off and like his, his like acting choices were always to go sillier rather than serious but yeah probably his agent was just like yeah you're one of those like good looking dummies that's great in these chick flicks right yeah and he was just like yeah he was just like yeah do that all right all right all right thing again that's amazing yeah, yeah do doing... that <laughs> do that again i can't did you watch his uh oscar speech that was yeah, it's hilarious. It was great. It was so <laughs> I, 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 can't, I like. I, I think I'm just like putting this in my memory because I just hope it's true so badly. But I have like a, a, me- a vivid memory of him going up, grabbing the the Oscar, and just being like, 
all right, all right, all right. And everyone just being like, yes, that's why you won this. I think he might have done that. I think he actually did do that too. Yeah. I'm going to have to check. And uh, I'll be really – actually, maybe I shouldn't check because that will be really disappointing if he didn't. But uh, uh, I think he might have done that. I hope so. But yeah, so comparing the cast on Interstellar to this, which, I mean, I think yeah. I think The Martian probably is nominally the bigger movie of the year kind of thing relative to Interstellar sort of – like Interstellar was like pretty big, but I feel like it kind of got a yeah. lot of hype because uh, – of the sci-fi aspect of it, and because they had like, you know, serious scientists trying to do a really good job on getting the effects right and stuff. Yeah. Which, you know, is very much in the same vein as what this movie is trying to do, really. Uh, although kind of a different story, obviously. But but yeah, just looking at the cast, like Matt Matt McConaughey is the big one, and then it's really like John Lithgow is in it great. for a little bit, uh, and then Anne Hathaway is in it as well. Also some big names. Michael Caine, obviously. And then Matt Damon's in it a tiny amount. But that's like, that's all there is. Like, I don't really recognize any other names here. Not that I'm a huge film buff or anything, but uh, I, like just comparing the cast, I'm like, yeah. The Martian's going to be a bigger movie, and I loved Interstellar so much that hopefully that means it's going to be a better movie too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely recognize more people on the cast of... Uh... The Martian. Yeah. Uh, although, it seems like the Interstellar cast has a lot of older guys. Yeah, maybe some. I uh, don't there's, know. there's big names there: Anne Hathaway, Michael Caine, yeah. John Lithgow, Matthew McConaughey. There he is. Yeah, I'm looking it's at the cool whole guy. cast right now. I'm trying to think if there's like other small, like other like cameos of like big names, but I guess, I guess like Matt Damon was the biggest one, but I guess he had a pretty big role as well. Oh, you haven't seen it yet, so. Anyway, Matt Damon's in it. He has a pretty big role. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, with respect to this podcast, maybe I feel like we've like talked a pretty good amount about The Martian today. We have. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, yeah. So, I don't think there's like any. I don't think it makes much sense to like do this again where we also do like the same kind of thing like when I was really excited about uh, doing this with you I was like oh yeah we can do this first episode and it would be yeah. like and I was already you know I was like I was super excited I was like yeah it's going to be like a million episodes but obviously it won't be um, and I was like yeah we can do this thing where it's like real quick or an intro to the movie get some like first impressions and then kind of talk about sort of how I why I like the book and stuff like that and what you think of the movie and then maybe the, the like more like details about the movie, the cast and stuff, which we have done a good job of. Um, the other one that I really want to do is uh, watch the movie on our own, like in a couple of weeks from now when, when we've had a chance to see it. I think it comes out next week sometime. Yeah. And then maybe like do another podcast shortly after that. And we talk about how we felt about the movie. And like, yeah, yeah that'd be I mean that'd be really cool for me because then I could I could kind of compare and contrast. I hear that they stuck to the book quite a bit just based off of you know and ask me anything that the author did on Reddit a little while yep. ago and everything else I've heard. It seems like they really followed the book quite closely. Uh, but still, it'll be interesting to do that. And then also getting your impression of, after like seeing the whole story sort of told on the big screen. Oh, be cool. There might be parts of the movie that you like or that I like that you don't like. Yeah, and that's what so that'll be interesting. That's what the world wants to know. I think this is, this is going to be some big stuff. Yeah, We're gonna make and headlines. So that movie comes out next week, you think? Yeah, it's now week, next week sometime. I think it's October second. So I guess that's probably Friday. I don't know. Mm. Um, but I don't. I'm not worried about seeing it right away. Um, maybe just let me know when you can watch it, because I feel like I'm more flexible than you are right now. And then I'll uh, just like watch it within a couple days of that. And then, like, a few days later, we'll we'll schedule a time or something. Yeah, that'd be good. So the other thing that I thought might be really funny, but I don't know. I don't know if we actually want to do it or not. But I think it would be cool to sort of do this again, but have, like, a guest on. and But the guest being my mom. The guest is your mom. I think that would be really fun. And I think she would, like, have a really good time doing that, too. 
and like she would and just because like she just like wouldn't know anything about uh sort of the the like science aspects that i get really well not that, like my mom's like not stupid or anything but i get really excited about the you know the the details of the technical stuff and that's like right. not something she'd care about at all which i think yeah be... she'd probably just let it kind of gloss over and it, be like okay yeah it would just be I'll like watching it. a like watching a fantasy movie for me kind of thing that you just like suspend disbelief i do that too when i don't understand something i'm just like good enough i'll let it i'll let it slide <laughs> yeah and yeah. uh yeah and i feel like she'd be really fun to have a conversation about this with i don't know like so yeah i might see if uh it, it also might be a nightmare to coordinate all that but whatever um is that something you'd be interested in doing that's also something i could do just on my own with my mom well i mean i could yeah i'm pretty flexible i could i could tune into that as well okay um i don't think that would be a problem all right so maybe that's what i'll try and do well that's probably something for after after we, we do the movie it. one and then that'll give my chance to, my, for my mom to watch the movie too. Yeah, we'll see. This might it might all just be the same podcast episode. Yeah, we could bring her in halfway through. Right. Special guest. Special guest. It could be. Mom's uh, mom. We could ask her when she uh, heard her first YouTube song, where she was. Oh, you know what? We didn't introduce ourselves. Oh yeah, I'm Scott. <laughs> I'm Scott. <laughs> there we go. No. Uh, yeah. You're Colin. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, I'm Paul. Great. Good yeah. stuff. I'll just cut this out and put it at the beginning. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> keep it at the end uh, just to kind of keep the suspense up for the audience. Right. And uh, do we have a name for our podcast, really, at this point? No. I feel like I'm more I'm more excited about the theme song for the podcast. Like, mm. I'm, I've been trying to think a lot about how I want to sort of fade into this and or fit, yeah, yeah, have the song play and then fade into the podcast kind of thing. You thinking more exciting music or? Well, we could go spacey, spacey we, music. It could be spacey. It could be a lot of on loops theme. Loops. Bleep, bloop. <laughs> could, yeah, definitely some like computer robot noises for sure. That's an option. Mm. But if we wanted to go like really exciting, I feel like there isn't anything more exciting than uh, Jane by Jefferson Starship, which you may not be familiar with. Here, hang on, I'll link you to it. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, did you watch uh, Wet Hot American Summer? Either no. The, the show or the Netflix series that they did? I've heard that it's good, but I it's, have not. It's really funny. All right, I linked you to the song. You'll know it, but you may not recognize it. I'll know it when I hear it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you think that's a good song choice. Well, actually, it's it's probably a terrible Chong choice because it's like, it's like it, it builds up super hard and then it, then it's just gonna be like a huge uh, letdown when um, up, when uh, we actually start talking because it will just be like not nearly as exciting. I don't know. But we just need a little spice, spice up the podcast. Yeah. Can you hear uh, this? I'm I'm playing it right now, but it's probably just playing through my speakers. No, but I could I could listen to it. All right, whatever. On my thing. Right. Some homework for next I'll time, wait. maybe. I'll, I'll wait until after. Yeah. Um, you know, I think music is an important thing. We'll have to pick some music, and slot it in there at the beginning or at the end, wherever. Yeah, probably. Slot it in. Probably both. Probably gonna yep. do some intro and outro stuff. Mm. Same song or different song? Good question. These are all these are all good questions. We should almost well, like come up with like a list of songs that we can try. Um, yeah, I could try to come up with some stuff too. And so, yeah, yeah, I have no idea what to, to name this either. I, I'm not really worried about it, I guess, at this point. I feel like there's going to be more of a uh, more of something that ties it together, as or will realize what ties this ties it together as it goes on. Which like maybe like thinking about it a little bit what what happened today will help with that. Yeah, I mean we don't uh, we we can cover other things as well that's true yeah i don't want to pigeonhole expand us expand our scope yeah expand our audience yeah we can talk about we could just talk about sci-fi movies in general and like discuss their little scientific quirks and yeah or we could like just that. like maybe we should just stick with what we're best at and continue to spoil the most popular things we could just spoil everything yeah yeah that, that might be the way to go honestly 
and just like <laughs> join just, the ranks. Yeah, just make spoiler podcast. Spoiler podcast. Is that a popular thing? Is that something that? Uh... Yeah, I think it is. Like I, I listen to a podcast that goes through Game of Thrones, I and just... it doesn't spoil it. Well, okay, it spoils. That's spoils not the, the that's episodes not the point, one though. at a time. Right. It doesn't spoil anything from the future. Okay. Um, but yeah, on that podcast, they talk about how other Game of Thrones podcasts spoil like things that are in the books that haven't happened yet and stuff. So oh. there's definitely spoiler podcasts out there that exist that are popular. That, you know, that sounds like something I'd be really interested in is that'd be like the only reason I'd ever read the rest of the books is uh, so that I could have a podcast where I just ruined it for people. Like, like just told them exactly. And <laughs> like I'd release the episodes so that the episode that came out would just talk about the stuff that's going to happen in the next TV episode of Game of Thrones. There, there is, yeah, there is a podcast like that, and they talk about oh, what they it. expect will happen based on the books. And I guess, <laughs> I guess there's pre-releases that go to like journalists and stuff, so they can write their like episode summaries and stuff. Oh, and someone just like straight up says, "Yeah, fuck you guys." Yeah, and sometimes those get like leaked, so people will spoil things before right. they come out. Right. Mm. That is yeah. brilliant. I'm sad I didn't think of that before. They usually have like a watermark on them. Just like so don't, they're, don't so they're not like a final release, but you can still watch it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Um also this went on way longer than I thought we would do, or I think that the optimal length would be anyway. Yep. So I don't know. Might just might I I'm not sure how much like editing I'm gonna want to do. Probably none at all is gonna be where I land. Uh, Fair enough. But it might be worth it to cut this one. I feel like the optimal length is around like 20 minutes or something. Like, who wants to listen to people talk for that long about without much of a? I mean, like, I'll listen to like Radio Lab or something for an hour, but that's something that's, you know, hundreds of hours have been put into to produce it to be an hour of very dense and very enjoyable content. There are other enjoyable podcasts that go on way too long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. that, that aren't well researched and I'm not going to name any names you're going to name names, <laughs> yeah alright, fair enough uh, um, you, you, maybe the part where we're looking for the trying to get the video of the trailer that that was a bit long yep, definitely going to get rid of that if I can figure out how to do it um, yeah, yeah I feel like for that, reaching the one hour mark yeah well, I'm. Yeah, like I think this. I mean this could end at any time I think it could have ended at any time in the last like half hour or two this is just this is just like a phone call right now is kind of how i'm treating it but yeah. <laughs> that being said I'm, I'm not it's not necessarily the case that i will actually cut this out or anything yeah i'm fine with that cool all right and we're coming up on one hour now so maybe this is a good time to sign off okay sounds good all right man good to talk yeah. to you uh yeah, feel free to give me a call on a uh, regular phone if you need to talk about something with me. Okay, man, I will do that. All right. Goodbye. Fade out with uh, James.